Hi everybody, my name is Luca Leonard and here at Dreamworks Automobili I am the UX and UI design manager. Uh, we focus mostly on infotainment, but we do much more. Uh, on a previous episode with Mate, uh, you gave me a lot of questions and today I will try to answer most of them. The first question is, where do you see the future of car infotainment as we progress to fully autonomous driving? And will the C2 have some new technologies like AR implementation? So that's a good question. Uh, the car industry is nearing fully autonomous driving and as more and more vehicles are going to be autonomous, uh, the infotainments are going to change drastically because of the homologation rules and because of different government rules. Uh, this means that the regulations are not going to be focused on driving related uh, topics or regulations, but they're going to be more focused on car-related functional safety and road safety. So this is why the user is going to be able to do much more things except just driving. Uh, the infotainments are going to change accordingly and I expect that most of the infotainments are going to have a lot of uh, entertainment material. So there's mostly going to be a lot of Netflix, Amazon Prime, probably Disney, and of course the connection to the web and all of the things that the web offers to the user. The negative side I would say would be that all of the vehicles are going to become a platform for advertisement. So this is something that is probably going to happen and all of the infotainments are going to include a lot of advertisement as we see now on YouTube and other uh, channels. So regarding AR, we are exploring a lot of possibilities concerning AR, especially with our autonomous driving department. Uh, AR is great for showing information in different ways. Uh, it can make driving much safer. Uh, it can make driving a lot uh, in more entertaining. And of course, it can teach the user or the driver uh, to drive better in a specific way. So this is our one of our goals, and this is probably going to be also on the future cars. Um, yeah, in the bottom line, we are exploring AR. The second question is, how different is the process of UX UI on vehicle from the process of creating web mo mobile apps? any software insights. So the process is very different. Uh, we work with a lot of constraints and uh, this is not true when you are creating mobile and web apps. A lot of uh, things in the UI is regulated by homologation or government regulations and because of that we have to work in a specific way. Uh, when we are creating all of the documentation and uh, all of the requirements, we have to have the regulations in mind. So this is where we differ quite a lot from regular mobile or web apps or products. Uh, also, when we do testing, it's rather different because testing is also regulated by regulations. So we have to comply to that all the time. This is why it, it is quite different to work on a hypercar or a regular car even, uh, than creating a regular app. Uh, regarding different tools that we use, first of all, I would like to say Figma, because it's a fantastic tool and we abuse it quite a lot, creating design systems and everything that Figma is fantastic for it. Uh, second, I would recommend Axur uh, for high fidelity prototyping and also wireframing. Um, not only that, but you can go deep in UX with that. You can create very nice flowcharts. Third, I would say Unity. It's for extremely complex graphics, 3D, 3D 2D sort of graphics that other engines maybe can't reproduce. Uh, for 3D modeling, I would say Blender, uh, and that's mostly it. Of course, you will always use the Adobe Suite, but that's secondary in the card industry. The next question is, uh, do you have rules for designing and what are they? 
Of course we have. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of things is regulated and uh, we have to comply to that. But when looking at rules, we do not comply to them always. So when we create concepts for the whole car, when we create design concepts and when we start to create all of the documentation and the requirements, we go completely crazy, uh, which should fit a super expensive hypercar. So this is the reason why uh, we do not comply to rules at the beginning, but after that, everything that is created in the design process and everything that is uh, thought of is then wrapped around uh, the regulations and the homologation rules. So the next question is, side mirrorless vehicles, concept gimmick or on the road in the next five years? The efficiency increase is there, looks sexy, safety can be better with night vision and all that. Would you put the video output in the separate screens on door corners or main screens on the dashboard? I wouldn't say that side mirrorless vehicles are going to be a gimmick or that we are going to see more of them. Uh, of course, with autonomous driving vehicles, I think that there are going to be less and less vehicles that have side mirrors. But for driver-related vehicles, it will depend on the manufacturer itself. So side mirrors, it will depend on the speed the vehicle needs to uh, achieve, on the aerodynamics of the vehicle, uh, on the amount of space in the interior, and on a lot of other things that are mostly manufacturer related. So I wouldn't say that this is going to be a trend, it's going to depend mostly on, on what manufacturers are going to decide for a specific type of vehicle. The next question is, in almost any used car review, the hosts say that the screens are outdated or have slow interfaces compared to current ones. So I was wondering why high-end car companies don't throw out outdated for models that are, let's say, two to three years old. In my mind, it would be cool to be able to go to the dealer and buy an up-to-date central display to refresh the car interior a bit since the technology advances so fast and new gets old really fast. If not at the screens themselves, at least to get an update on the interface. Is the problem in the lack of interest or is the hardware so much different that it is uneconomical to adopt new tech on old systems? And is Riemats planning to take care of sold cars in that way to offer the owners a better experience as time goes by? I would say that this is quite uneconomical. Uh, to design a new screen for an old vehicle, it's going to be extremely uneconomical. Everything needs to fit to the same design, but you have to create something completely new. So why would we then design something that will fit an older version of the car when we can design something much better to fit a better version of the car and a newer version of the car? Also, uh, all of the electronics inside of the car need to pass through uh, safety regulations and need to comply to specific rules. If we go through the whole process for an older version of the car, we will not have any econ economical benefits. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, Q&A. Uh, in our department, we have a few job openings. So if you wish to join us, send us applications and that's it for me.